Good. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll start, guys. So I want to. It's an honor and pleasure to have Tony with us. Tony is one of the. Uh, just speaking honestly, he's one of the most successful agents in the whole country. He's part of the Mike Ferry system. He's actually a, a coach there also. But in this day, you know, they always talk about in the Mike Ferry system, Tony, like the listings is where you want to be as an agent. And these days, it's really hard to get listings because obviously, you know, um, it just is. So uh, Tony, who's once again, one of the best agents in the world, is going to, you know, just for 40 minutes here, 45 minutes, is just going to talk a little bit about how to strengthen your listing presentation so that you can pick up some uh, extra listings. Right. So with, without further ado, let's introduce Tony. Yay, Tony. <laughs> Woo! Well, thank, thank you for that. You know, um, you, you know, I've been a salesman my whole life. It's been what I do. It's what I'm passionate about. Uh, my world was uh, centered around sales for 33 years. Uh, only recently in the last uh, less than a year, I accepted this position here as vice president of Mike's office. Right. And, you know, there's one little thing that did happen in my transition from being a full time just real estate salesperson into this job was um, there was a little disappointment that I found. And, and uh, quite honestly, there's one little thing that I was disappointed at when I came. My whole speaking career, coaching career, selling career, I always kind of blamed everything on real estate agents. You know, we don't do things, we don't show up, we have no discipline, you know, all these things. And I always kind of was hard on our craft, right? But since I've been here, I've noticed something. There's, a, there's 106,000 real estate brokerages in North America right now. 106,000 wow. offices out there. Wow. And since I've come here at this job, I'm a little, I'm, it's kind of a 50-50. I'm, I'm blaming it on re, us real estate agents for not doing our work. But boy, many of those 106,000 brokers out there do not provide any services at all for their agents. Yes. So I want to make something clear before we start. In my short time here, if you don't appreciate what Alex is doing, the services, allowing us to come in, this elite brokerage, returning a call, I mean, just literally a stand-up guy as a broker, if you don't appreciate what that is, if you've ever thought about looking over the fence somewhere, don't. Because in my experience, I've never had so many brokers in my life not return a phone call, not, you know, send an email, you never hear back, ask them what they do for their agents. Ah, I don't want to talk about yeah. that. They're on their own, right? So, Alex, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Tony, I was, was going to say, too, Shep is like our, our business, my business partner, and then Tony, uh, Anthony up there is like our director of training. But we all do, they're all big Mike Ferry guys. They all go, we all go to the, uh, uh, um, seminars together yeah so i appreciate it thank you my friend tony yeah. we appreciate that tony that's a great I like what you said there well it's so important you know it, it i just i'm shocking to me honestly because i thought the brokers all had it all figured out and us agents were just screwing up but it's 50 yeah. 50 out there in the trenches and uh yeah so you guys uh for you just keep doing what you're doing it's good support it's it's great for the agents they actually have a fighting chance working here and that's with right the support that we have okay so thank you we're going to talk about listing presentation today. Uh, listing presentation. I'll never forget uh, probably 30 years ago sitting in a Mike Ferry event and Mike had us write down three, three initials and he had us write down P, P, C. And he said, okay, under the first P, I want you to write down prospecting. Okay. Under the second P, I want you to write down presenting. And under the C, I want you to write down closing. Of those three things, which is the most important? Okay, me back then being a young, aggressive, you know, naive salesperson, I circled closing. Oh man, it's all about the close. You got to be a closer, right? And I looked around at other people in half of the room, they had something else. Nobody hardly had circled presenting. And Mike said, the single most profitable thing you will ever do in your real estate career as a salesperson is learn how to present. So what good is all the, the prospecting if you botch it at the listing presentation? What good is, you know, having a really sloppy presentation, but expecting to close for a signature? The most valuable thing you're going to ever do as an agent is learn to present. Okay. And you've got to, you've got to really start having some be honest, right? It is common and natural for all of us. 
I want more leads. Give me more leads. Hey, how come you guys don't run more ads as a company? How about more marketing? We, we need more leads, leads, leads. And then we spend this much time working on our presentation. It's so backwards, right? We have to, first of all, appreciate that the presentation is the solution. And so I'm going to ask everybody watching today to just, just to have this be honest. How much honest time have you spent trying to perfect a listing presentation for yourself? Have you put in the work? Have you put in the time? Because that's what's required to make a lot of money. Okay. So we're going to, you know, natural Mike Ferry. Mike Ferry always gives us more notes than we could ever digest, right? And so we went through these points together when we started this series of webinars. And there's a chance I might not get through it. Okay. So typical fashion, Lori will reach out. I'll get this, these notes in Alex's hands and, and he'll distribute them. So we'll get these notes in your hands. So you've got what we've got. Okay. So let's dig in, shall we? Yes, sir. Let's do it. I'm excited. Just I'm listening excited. to you, just listening to you, Tony, like gets me pumped up. I feel like I'm at a Mike Fury event. <laughs> you wait, we're going to have some fun, right? So you have to, first of all, start thinking about, you know, I'm going to use some fun words in this just because I, I don't like thinking average at anything we do. So I'm going to use the words world class. Okay. Now, Mike Ferry probably wouldn't use those words if he were presenting because he doesn't, he does, you know, you know, Mike Ferry, he's straight to it. Right. And then he's not going to throw any flashy flary things on top of anything. It's just the way he presents. I'm going to use the world words world class just for fun. Okay. okay. So I'm going to challenge you watching today to suggest that would you consider having a world-class listing presentation? And what I mean by that is, could your presentation stand up anywhere that, you know, let's say if all you do is speak English like I do, would your presentation stand up anywhere where they speak English? Are you striving for something like that? You know, it's not hard to be world-class in the real estate industry because so few people are even interested in being world-class. So if you choose to have a world-class presentation, it's not like being a world-class actor or a world-class, that's so much harder. But to have a world-class presentation, that's doable for all of us, okay? So point number one, if you, and I'm, so I'll just play around with the words. If you ever wanna have a world-class listing presentation, you must create a strong pre-appointment routine. Okay. If you ever want to have a world-class presentation, you've got to create a strong pre-appointment routine. Why? Because our competitors don't. And if our competitors don't have one and you do, you're going to win. And I mean everything from the second they say that, you know, the, the seller says, let's go ahead and meet. Hasn't the appointment begun? I mean, really from the second they go, okay, good. Let's, let's meet tomorrow at four o'clock. In my mind, the presentation has begun, okay? And so you've got to have a pre-appointment routine. Everything from the preparation you do, the, the you know, re reciting the scripts, working through the objections you might receive, getting there early, right? Uh, Role-playing in your car just a few minutes before you start. Everything you do has got to line up for this moment where you get the listing, okay? Uh, even, even down to as simple as, for me, I used to point at the ground. Every time I would walk up to a home to present, I would point at the ground. My sign is going right there. I'm going to put my wow. sign right there, right? And it was just a little trigger for me to say, I'm not walking out without a listing, right? Let's face it. Average commission, $7,000 approximately where you live, right? Yeah. Yes, Sounds sir. about like my market at home, seven grand, okay? Okay. If you get a listing today, are you getting paid? If you get a listing today, it's the closest thing to a guaranteed paycheck that I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, the inventory is like this, right? You walk out with a contract today, you're getting paid. And so you can't afford to walk out without a contract in your hand. And you walk out today and there's a hundred wolves out there and they're all going to come in behind you and they'll raise the price, lower their commission, lie, do whatever they got to do, right? But they're going to steal that thing out from underneath you. You only get one shot. So you've got to have a pre-appointment routine that gets you that one shot. Okay. Number two, I wrote down, if you want to have a world-class presentation, you have to accept the fact that some prospects are not qualified and they're not motivated. You've yeah. got to maintain your pre-qualification standards. 
There's no such thing today as knowing too much about a seller. You get one shot. So if you only get one shot and you don't pre-qualify, you walk into the house and you get blindsided with something. You know, you get blindsided with, um, <laughs> have you ever had this? Hey, uh, I, hey uh, Tony, did, did Bob tell you about our, our lawsuit? What lawsuit? Well, we can't sell the house for a couple more years because, you know, we got a little lawsuit going on. You ever have that? Or yeah. uh, lack of preparation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, Tony, I, I don't know if I mentioned our third, fourth and fifth mortgage. You know, that might be a problem. The third, fourth and fifth mortgage or gosh, you know, uh, the back half of the house. We're in a real problem with the city because the permits aren't haven't been filed. You know, there's a million things. There's no such thing as knowing too much. You've got to accept the fact when the inventory shrinks, it's natural and it's a natural instinct to stop pre-qualifying. Well, I'm just going to go because there's no listings. I'm going, right? Uh-uh. You've got a prequel because you only get one chance. All right. I wrote down number three. If you want to really strengthen your presentation, our conversations have got to go way beyond casual. Right. If you want to strengthen your presentation, we've got to move beyond casual. Once again, why? Because our competitors are getting more and more casual every year. So give me give me an example of what you mean by that. So, oh, yeah. so hey, why don't we do this? Well, come on, I'll, I'll come over, I'll take a look at the house. I want to see what you've done. Let me take a look at what's going on. And then I'll go back and then I'll do the research and then I'll let you know what your home is worth. That's casual. Okay. okay? Um, a really nice suit jacket with an ACDC t-shirt under it is not how you present. Okay. I know they make jeans that are $500 and they have a big hole in the knee. I know they do, but that is not presenting. That's casual. Okay. And I know your best friends and some of your past clients, they want you to come. Hey, just come on over. We'll chat about selling our home. Gosh, I'm sorry. Um, because you're one of my best past customers, I believe you deserve the best presentation I've got. So rather than casual, let's go ahead and make it formal. Okay. Right. You, you, you know, how about this? Do you ever go out with your friends one night? You're going to have a glass of wine and you just leave $7,000 casually up on the bar while you play around in there. Do you ever have $7,000 hanging out of your box no, pocket no, at Disneyland no. casually walking around? No, no, no. So no, you know, it, you're right. right. People appreciate professionalism. That's what yes. They're... Because our competitors are getting worse and worse every year. Every year it's getting a little worse, a little sloppier, a little t-shirt, little hat on, little wild hair, little jeans and tennis shoes, uh, trying to look cool. And so Mike, this is Mike talking, right? You have got to make your presentations formal. Seven grand on the line. I wrote down next, if you wanna ever become world-class and strengthen your listing presentation, you've at some point got to work on your listening skills. Okay? Yeah. Listening skills. Ask yourself this question. Have I honestly ever done anything to become a better listener? Have I read any books? Have I studied anything? Have I ever practiced it? Have everyone considered what it takes to be a better listener? I think being married has actually helped me like tune people out, not listen. So that's <laughs> right? a good point. That's, that's fair, right? In the world, there's so much, you know, the internet and the TV and all this stuff hammering you all the time. We are, we are getting less and less of, of a strength of ability to be able to listen. In fact, the entire world is only listening now so they can speak. All they're trying to do is hear enough so they can decide what they want to say. That's not listening. That's the opposite of listening. Okay. Um, most people presenting today, and there's, there's listing presentations going on right now while we're here. There's, there's agents sitting at the table and all they're doing is hearing the seller trying to express themselves. And they're sitting here like this. Okay, I, I got something I want to say. That's not listening. Okay, why does Mike Ferry? Is, why does Mike Ferry come across like a genius to people he's never met? Because he asks questions and he listens. So the world looks at him and go, "You're the smartest guy I've ever met," because he asks questions and he listens. It makes him a genius. Yeah. So if you want to be a genius on a listing presentation, you've got to work on your ability to listen. How? 
at some point, you don't, you've got to get yourself in a position that you, you're not concerned about what to say. Like at some point, you've got to master the dialogues to a level that you don't have to worry all the time about what to say next. Then you can listen. I've also noticed that when you listen, you can pick up like verbal cues and other kind of things where to take, isn't that right, Anthony? You can take up verbal cues to take your listening presentation in a different direction or a different, you know, uh, um, yeah, that's a really good point, Tony. Well, a lot of people, they, they, they're literally saying, I want to sign now, but we're so busy not listening and trying to talk that they say, I want to sign. And they're not saying out loud, I want to sign, but they're, everything's pointing to, they're ready to go. They do things like this. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes it. Mm -hmm, yeah, I got you. I follow you. They're, they want to sign, but I have an agenda here. I've got to keep talking. So you just basically talk your way right through it. Yeah. They don't sign a contract. That's crazy, right? Uh, you know, number five, I wrote down on this. Think about your favorite comedian. Dave Chappelle. Ah, good. I like it. Think about your favorite actor or actress. Okay. Think about your favorite musician, you know, your favorite band. Do you jump up and give them a standing ovation when you hear them perform? Yep. Yeah. Every time, right, you feel this urge in your feet and it works itself up. And the next thing you know, you're standing up like a crazy person yelling at the top of your lungs. Everybody else is too, right? Why? Because of the presentation. And so you have to, at some point, ask yourself personally, are you striving for that? Now, I don't, I've never had a seller jump up and down and go, okay, yeah, right? I've never had that happen. And you probably never will. But should you strive for that? Should you strive for the people sitting across the table to go, you know what? That's the best presentation I've ever seen. Like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you try to make that happen if it's possible, right? Why don't we? Our ego gets in the way. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little firm here because it's so painful to me. Mm -hmm. I have seen, I don't know, a couple hundred agents in my coaching and speaking career that I know really well. And I've watched their business, make some money, give it back, make some money, give it back, make good money for a while, give it all back. And I've watched a couple hundred agents over 20 years, not adopt a presentation because of their ego. It is so hard and painful to watch them. They're good people. They're great. They have just as much talent as any of us. They can sell to the top of their ability, but they, their ego just won't let them go there. And so they do this for 20 years. Ah, it drives me nuts. Okay? I wrote down, it's hard to change, isn't it? Changing behaviors is hard. Mm -hmm. So many people will not go down this idea of a standing ovation presentation because that change is hard. You know, right? You ever been in this spot where you go, that's it. I'm using this Mike Ferry script this time, man. This is the day. I'm, I'm going to do it, you know? Sure. You're walking down the walkway. You're all fired up. You got the script. I'm going to do it, right? The door opens up. The seller says hello. And you say the cardinal sin of presenting. How are you folks doing this afternoon? Well, that's not our script. So right from the beginning, you say, how are you folks? Like, oh, we're fine. The kids had a little rough day. Come on, let me show you around. Let me take, next thing you know, you're walking out an hour and a half later without the listing and you didn't do it. It went somewhere. It's hard to change, isn't it? That's yeah. why in our presentation, we start from the second the door opens. Thank you so much for having me over. I'm so excited about getting your home on the market and getting it sold. Could you set up at the kitchen table? I want to go take a look at the home like a buyer's going to see it. I'll be back here in a minute, and I can't wait to put on a good presentation for you this afternoon. We don't, we create an environment where you can't screw it up because it's hard to change. And then I wrote down, our lack of commitment stops us. Okay, our lack of commitment. So here's where I start having some fun, okay? Okay. Do you want some more real estate owned? Do you want to own some more rental properties? Yes. It's your presentation. Do you want more money and cash in the bank? Work on your yes. presentation. Do you want to break a sales record at the company this year? It's because of your presentation. Do you want to retire wealthy? It's because of your presentation. 
if you can connect the dots that any goals you have can be based on your ability to present better, you'll start having all those goals come true. Okay. And that commitment to it. Okay. So if we want to really ever have this happen at some point, we have to understand the value of asking questions. At some point we have to shift from big sweeping statements that we can make, you know, these big statements you can make at a listing presentation. Hey, let me tell you about our incredible marketing plan. Hey, I want to take some time and talk about this company we work for. It's so awesome. Can I tell with you what I do and my track record and why you want to hire me? Those are just statements, right? Mm -hmm. You can't ever switch to asking good questions. You'll never be world-class. Why? Yeah. Because our competitors all just make big statements. I'll bet if you went and interviewed a seller after they, so a seller had, they interviewed five agents for the job. They picked one. And then you went and had a heart to heart with that seller. Tell me what, what happened in these five presentations? What, what did they talk about? Oh, they talked about their marketing plan. They talked about their company. They talked about why they're so great. They talked, they talked. They will never say they asked me what I wanted. They'll never say they, they asked me what I wanted. Our competitors don't do that, so we do. Do you guys see a theme here with Mike Ferry? Figure out what our competitors do and do the opposite. There's a theme. Well, okay. I think it's kind of like when we interview like an agent. In an old, in the past, we would be, uh, Chef Anthony and me, we, we, we would be like, oh, we're such an awesome company and, and you know, kind of like barrage them with information for 30 minutes instead of just being like, uh, Hey, what are you looking for in a brokerage? Yep. And then, you know, addressing each one of those points. And actually, it's kind of funny. We had an agent that we just picked up. And uh, I think we're the fourth company that, uh, you know, they had interviewed. And the agent said, you're the first company that asked me, like, what I wanted. Yep. So, so it's so... It, it makes so much sense because it, it's so easy to predict how it's going to work out that all you have to do is kind of go in a little different direction because then you're going to sound different. You're going to be unique. You're going to be special. You're going to be smart, right? It's so simple, okay? Mike had me write down number seven. Uh, to, to become world-class, I keep throwing that in. His, his line is to strengthen your presentation. I say to become world-class, so I'll probably get in trouble for that, but I'm off script. OK, but to become world class, OK, you have to pay attention to the details. Everything like, have you ever been critiqued on your eye contact? You know, most uh, agents have a problem with making eye contact with people or the seller. Have you ever been critiqued on your smile? Most people can't smile naturally in public. They just can't. Most people, when they get in a listing presentation, because it's serious, Mm -hmm. then they treat it serious. That's not selling. Your ability to smile. Have you ever been critiqued on your handshake? Boy, I got to tell you, you ever shake hands with the uh, Kung Fu grip? I'm going to rip your arm off. How about the wet fish? You ever shake hands with a wet fish? That one's yeah, disgusting. I can't handle that one. That's no fun. But, you, you know, sometimes we won't even take time to critique ourselves on some of the details. Now, you don't have to have a whole line of $4,000 suits. You know, it doesn't have to be that. You can have your presentation outfit or two. And you can recognize that you have a listing presentation today. You put on your best Superman, Superwoman suit, and you go and you're ready to present. Pretty soon, you'll have a, a closet full of $4,000 suits. Okay, but you need to be critiqued on it. Have you ever been critiqued on that entry to the home? Thank you so much for having me over. Like just being critiqued on that alone could change your presentation. You've got to pay attention to the details. Okay, many people, I've, wa I've watched a bunch of videos. In fact, I actually have like a hundred uh, videos of myself doing live listing presentations over all the years, okay? Some in the beginning were the most horrific thing I've ever seen, right? Like horrible, okay? And then there's only a couple out of that batch that I would say were world-class, but I'm a tough critic, right? But I've seen a lot of my coaching clients. And you know, there's a weird spot when you sit down at the kitchen table and you get your materials out where you put your materials out that you're gonna present. 
and many agents lose credibility right there because it's like, oh, hold on, uh, let me see, I got some paperwork. Wait, where, oh, hold on, where's my doggone pen? Oh, there's my pen. Where? And there's this window of time that the seller's like, that is awkward. So maybe you need to practice pull, putting your materials in the exact same way and pulling them out in a way that's comfortable, natural. You don't shuffle and fumble. Your, your paper gets put out right in front, you know, two pens right at the top, right? You put this out so that the, the seller's comfortable, right? It's important, the details. Seven grand on the line every time. It's important, okay? Okay, and we're gonna spend some time on point eight, okay? Point eight is, if you ever want to have a world-class presentation, you have got to accept a canned presentation. If you ever want to be, you know that actor that you stand up and cheer for? Canned. You know that band that you jump up and down and scream at the top of your lungs? 10,000 hours of practice, canned, mm -hmm. right? You know that comedian, Dave Chappelle, when he comes and you just laugh like crazy every time, you know the amount of hours he's put in canning that presentation? And even like you tie your tie. Anthony, you ever try to tie your tie a different way than you did this morning? Try to tie it different and see how it works out for you. Not good. It's not good. It's canned. It's 100%. Ladies, you put makeup on, it's canned. Try to put on makeup a different way. It's not going to work. We live in a canned environment. Well, even like Tom Brady, you know, he's the goat, but he, you know, he's the best quarterback in the history of football does he throw the football every day does he you know that guy still practices and he's the best yes in fact it's interesting the stronger the can presentation the higher the pay in almost every field you know uh you, you have two actors they both went to juilliard they both went to an uh, acting school in new york two actors right um they both look really good sharp lookers sharp dressers right very similar why does Tom Hanks get paid, you know, $20 million to do a film and the guy that went to the same class get paid 400000 It's the canned presentation. So why do people hate canned presentations or practice so much, Tony? We're going to dig into it. Thank you. Okay. We're going to dig into it. Okay. First, we want to look at the value. Okay. So I'm hoping that I can uh, change everybody's mind today in a couple areas. One is the amount of time you're willing to put into it. And two is that you will, you're willing to think world-class and try to refine it to that level. And then for some of you, I'm hoping to have you go, you know what, that's it. I'm going to take a canned presentation. I'm hoping some of you will go enough is enough, yeah. right? But the customer value, a canned presentation is 100% customer oriented from the start to the finish, right? It's, it's 100% oriented to the customer. If you freestyle it, and, and you can maybe appreciate this. I, I'll never forget one time where I had a realization. I was sitting at a listing presentation, wasn't fully Mike Ferry yet. I was kind of in and out of it, right? I was at the presentation and they said something, they asked a question and I started making statements and I started talking about something. And out of the corner of my eye, I remember it as plain as day, as the corner of my eye, I could see Mr. Seller sitting there. And I looked over and I saw Mr. Seller out of the corner of my eye do this. Like, it was like, why am I here listening to this? There was nothing more humbling to me than seeing the seller go, what am I, why do I have to listen to this? Right? Because the, the, at that moment, I was not customer oriented. Right? You have to appreciate that they only have one. To, will they talk to you about soccer and basketball and all that? Yes, because they, they're, they're going to be polite. Do they want to talk to you about soccer and basketball? No. They want to get the job done. Okay. Number two, the reason that there's so much value is a practice canned presentation. You can predict the answers, right? Hey, at the end of my presentation, one of three things will happen, right? You know, you can predict, right? Okay. So I wrote down three questions for you. Do you absolutely have to sell your home? They're either going to say yes or no. Will you price your home at a price that will cause it to sell or you want it to sit on the market for a long period of time? Who's ever going to say we want it to sit here for a long time? Right? That's correct. Right? That's correct. Do you want me to go ahead and handle the sale? They're either going to say yes, no, or maybe. A canned presentation, all of the answers are predictable. 
So right? let me ask you a question. So you know how in the Mike Ferry system you got the four personality types? Yep. How do you adjust that canned presentation to the four personality types? You just think about it? Or, it's know, pretty it's simple. One, yeah, it's pretty simple. Once you know, well, first of all, you can never do it if you don't memorize the scripts. Okay. Okay, because you can't listen. So you can't yeah. hear. And so you can never even consider adding some words, right? Some words like, hey, at the end of my presentation, and I, I'm going to give you every piece of factual data you're going to need to make a decision. Who's that for? That's for the analytical. Yeah. Okay. At the end of my presentation, uh, you're going to be so excited to tell your friends about how this marketing went off. Right. Okay. At the end of my presentation, uh, you're going to get the right money and the right time in the right work way. So Trevor, Trevor. Trevor. Right. At the end of my presentation, you know, if something's going to happen. You're going to, we're going to have such a relationship that you're going to be so excited with that. You're probably going to want to tell your friends about how great this experience was. And the quote. It's simple, but it's not, none of our words are complex, but if you don't ever memorize it, you can never go there. Okay. okay. So why do we resist it? I get, I've had a little series of things and I'm going to ask everybody to, and this is a chance for you to be honest with yourself. Nobody's going to judge you or watch you. We're not going to have you write the answers, but when I'm going through these, this lists, okay, I want you to identify which with, with which one of them makes sense, why you resist it at times. And one of these is going to ring a bell and you go, that's why I resist it. Okay. If you'll be honest with yourself with that, when I get to the next section, you're going to, it's going to smooth out. Okay. Our ego gets in the way. Many of us won't accept a canned presentation because our ego gets in the way. We say things like mine's good already. I don't want to change it now at this age. I, I don't want to go through all that. Right. Um, what if, you know, um, what if I change it and I lose a listing? That's your ego starting to speak up. Right. Two, I wrote down, you're concerned the script will make you look like a salesperson. Well, you people, are a salesperson. Yeah, like cars, like car sales. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in real estate, it's very common for real estate agents to not put salesperson on their card. They put counselor, they put, you know, consultant, they put advisor, and they put those words on their business card because they don't even like the sound of salesperson in their ear. Okay. The problem is, is that the seller sees us as a salesperson, the, the public sees us as salespeople, and they see that we don't. And that's the problem. Okay. Like the sellers expect a salesperson. You know, they actually expect you to do that until we show up and then it's disappointing, right? I wrote down, we've just maybe never learned a script. So we haven't been introduced how to learn a script. There's some people that just haven't really taken the time to understand learning a script. I wrote down, we don't see real estate as a professional sales activity. We see, um, you know, the salesperson at the, at the, you know, department store, that's professional sales. We see Xerox as professional sales, but maybe we don't see real estate as professional sales. It's possible. I wrote down scripts that will make you uncomfortable. Many people will not adopt a canned presentation because of that little three, two, three, four month window of uncomfortableness. So they won't, they won't adopt it because they just don't, you know, for anybody ever ski and try to switch to snowboarding? Yes. Any, yeah, right? So many people learn how to ski when they're a kid and skiing's pretty cool, but then you see these snowboarders and wow, it looks so free and you got one board instead of two, yeah. and all these incredible things. And you see, God, I want to try that someday, but they just won't do it because I don't want to fall and bust my butt for two days. So I'm just going to keep skiing. I wish I was a snowboarder, right? And they just won't go through that one day of uncomfort. Many people won't do it because they, they just set up that they like the customer to control it. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, why don't you guys show me around and show me all the incredible things you've done to your home, right? Hey, Bob and Mary, um, tell me what you're looking for in an agent. Bob and Mary, um, help, tell me what kind of price were you going to want to list the home for today? You just kind of like letting the seller take charge. It's tough. I wrote down, some people enjoy the bonding. Many, many people in sales really enjoy the bond. Remember when we used to be able to high five before COVID? Remember that? Remember when your clients would run up and hug you and go, thank you so much for helping me? That was all the bonding experience, okay? 
Question. Would, do you want to really bond with somebody if you don't get the listing? So uh, it'd be like this. Hey, Tony, we gave the listing to Jim, but hey, let's be friends. <laughs> I don't really want to be your friend anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But the truth is you're only going to make these lifelong friends, which I have a lot of them in real estate, but you're only going to make these lifelong friends and have these true bonding moments, if you will, if you provide the good service and you get the listing. In today's world, if you don't have a canned presentation, you never get a chance because you don't get the listing. Think about all the potential friends you've lost because you didn't get the listing. Maybe hundreds, hundreds yeah. of professional, you know, potential best friends or potential long 30 year clients. Okay. You have to ask yourself. And then Mike always asked me to put this one down and I, I, I struggled with it for years, but it's true. Some people won't adopt a canned presentation because they're afraid they might succeed. Okay. Now I used to not believe this. Like I would sit in a seminar and I'd go, what do you mean, Mike? You know, not succeed. Doesn't everybody want to succeed? But the truth is, this is, this is real. Why? If you, did if you really develop a canned presentation, you might need to hire a new tax person. You'll probably move to a different, bigger, nicer home and have to find new neighbors. Some of your current friends are not going to like you anymore. Um, some of your family members might get a little irritated with you. Right? Have you ever had to, like with my father, I'll be honest, okay? I've had to downgrade the cost of anything I've ever bought, right? My dad will go, hey, son, what'd you pay for that art? I'll go, oh, God, I got that. I got that at a garage sale. Dad, I bought that painting. I think I paid $35 for it. Oh, it was $3,500, right? But have you ever had to downgrade the price with your parents because you don't want to go through it? These things happen when you become a great presenter. I so, think the, the yeah. issue too is like, uh, it's also, I think people are scared because, you know, there are a lot of people out there that are in terrible relationships with like abusive emotional relationships of their significant other. And you ask them, well, why don't you just leave? And they're like, well, at least they know it's consistent, right? They know it's a bad, <laughs> yeah. horrible relationship, but what's going to happen? Maybe I'll leave. It'll be worse, you know? <laughs> yes, it's very true. You know, we, we, we all of us get stuck in little patterns and little ruts and all those things and, and, and taking a big, bold step out into the world of presenting like world class, you're taking a step out on a lot of other things too, okay? So it, do, it does have an effect, okay? But we want to look at a couple things with this, right? First of all, we want to look at when you choose this path, when you choose the path of a canned presentation, we have to be clear on the benefits, it has to be worth it. And because we understand what you have to go through. So there's some things that are worth it, right? Would you like to save a mountain of time in your life? One way to save a mountain of time is to have canned presentations. Because if you're going to ever list a lot of homes for a lot of years, there's only one way you have to save time. You can't list a lot of homes and have each presentation take an hour and a half. It's hard to ever list a lot, right? So a canned presentation takes an hour and a half presentation down to 15, 20 minutes, a lot of times one minute, okay? Do you know that if you, and we're going to get to it in a minute, but if you follow our five-step process and you, and you follow it properly and you perfect what you say in a presentation, the close becomes so simple because you become the obvious choice like the seller sitting there and they go okay this person is suited up they have a big smile on their face they were not awkward they they took control of the situation which i like they sat down they put their paperwork out properly they presented they ask us nothing but question after question most people will see that and go there there is no other choice you're so obviously the right one so it happens really fast there's no banter they go okay good we found it. You're it, right? I wrote down scripts and the canned presentation allows us to maintain focus on what the seller wants. God, there's nothing better than just the seller going, that was all about what my needs. I wrote down consistency. Let's say you get a job and you get a really high paying job and it's a, say it's a $400,000 a year job. 
okay? $400,000 a year job with benefits. Mm -hmm. There is a consistent amount of money that's put into your retirement account. So when you've been working there 20 years, you go, honey, we're going to be fine. I get $32,000 a month coming in. It's all good. Let's go enjoy our lives. Hop in the motor home. Let's have some fun. Consistency. A canned presentation will allow you to do the same thing in the real estate industry. It'll allow you to put 10, 12, $15,000 a month into a retirement account. So you too, when you get to the spot where you say, okay, that's enough. You go out and you travel around and take the boat out and go travel around with no worries whatsoever. That's what a canned presentation can do for you. Okay. I wrote down prospect receives the benefits of not only working with you, but then wants to give you the referrals. Mm -hmm. Okay. A canned presentation puts you in this little channel where they're, they're impressed enough to not only list with you, but give you the referrals too. Okay. And it works in reverse too. This, this is tragic, okay? You go to a past client, you've known him for a long time, mm -hmm. sold a house or two, you walk in, you, you do your normal spiel, you know, not a canned presentation, right? They give you the listing, you know, it's you. They give you the listing. You walk out, you're skipping down the walkway with your listing, they're seven grand, yes. You get in the car and then the husband and wife have a conversation when you're gone. You know, Tony's kind of gotten sloppy, hasn't he? I mean, we gave him the listing, of course, we didn't do that, but you know, I don't know, after that presentation, I think it's going downhill. Is he like taking us for granted? Is it, it kind of seems sloppy, didn't it? You know, do you think we should tell Tony about Uncle Bob who owns 10 houses he wants to sell? I don't think we should, should we? Yeah, I don't want to talk about Uncle Bob because you know, it's sloppy. I don't want Uncle Bob to experience that. Mm -hmm. And that's happening every day because you don't have a canned presentation, right? Think about not just the listing you lost, but how about the referrals you've lost, okay? I wrote down number nine on this list. I'll never forget it because I was sitting two seats down from Karen Bernardi. And if you haven't met Karen Bernardi, she's one of the best agents of all time. She's been making two, two and a half, three million dollars a year for 20 years, selling homes, right? I mean, selling homes, right? It's, it's been an awesome career. I think she's made almost a hundred million dollars in this industry, okay? Selling houses. Okay. We were sitting two seats away from each other at a Mike Ferry event. And I saw Karen Bernardi. She raised her hand. She goes, Mike, I have a question. Yes, Karen. What? She said, I've been selling some homes, but I realized in our seminar today that I don't know how to sell. Okay. Now I'll be honest. It ticked me off because I looked at her and go, you make more money than me by a factor of 10. And you're saying, you don't know how to, what's going on. And she says, I don't know, energy, whatever, luck, whatever you want to call it. But I don't have a canned presentation. And Mike goes, well, first of all, thank you, Karen, for being honest, okay? And she goes, I want to have a can. She's making six, seven, 800,000 bucks a year at that time, okay? And she, and she said, I want this canned presentation, Mike. How do I do it? How do I go about doing that? And he said, well, I'm gonna tell you what to do and this this will prove it, okay? He said, I want you to take the presentation, that I, the script, and I want you to write it every day for 30 straight days. Every day for 30 straight days. And then I believe you'll adopt our idea of a canned presentation. Karen said, I'll do it, right? I was sitting there going, is that what it's gonna take? Because I don't have a canned presentation. And so me sitting two steps down took the advice that was given to Karen. And for every day, for 30 straight days, I wrote the listing presentation out completely, start to finish. It's when everything changed in my career. Literally, it was almost, it was 30 years ago is when I finally adopted Mike Ferry wholly. I adopted a canned presentation and my point, I was making a hundred thousand bucks a year or something like that. It went from a hundred thousand dollars a year and went straight up the channel at, like that because I listened to what Karen did. So I'm going to ask you to do the same, okay? I'm going to ask you to officially adopt the idea of this and write it out, okay? You have to write it out. The beauty of our presentation, the beauty of it is this one presentation works for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's one, like I, one of my wealthiest clients, I, I think I sold 250, 300 homes with him, um, big flipper, great guy. I've known him. We've become really close friends and business partners. But when I met him, 
I met him at an expired listing. He had one of his flips that expired and I called on it and okay. we met and I just used my canned presentation, the only one I know. And at the end, I'll never forget his name's Todd Schimmel, Schimmelfenning. He lives in California and Todd leans back and he goes, that was interesting. And I go, what do you mean interesting? He goes, I've never seen a presentation like that. He said, I've sold over 3000 personal properties in my life and I've never heard a presentation like that. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. You haven't heard that Mike Ferry script? He goes, no, I've never heard that. He said, we're gonna work together for a long time. Yeah, I think he picked up, he's a professional and he picked up on your professionalism. But I have a question for you. I've yeah. seen you perform on stage at the Mike Ferry events mm -hmm. and you're really good. And I wanted to see, uh, you know, I'll text you later, but I'd like to send our agents like, uh, one of the agents just asked if they could see your listing presentation. I guess I could pull up some of the old Mike Fury footage so they can yeah. see you on stage. Actually, well, what you want to do is we have some of our presentations published on there. Um, we have, you know, Hal, his yeah. presentation is probably most similar to mine. Mike Darda, very similar to mine. We have some of those published in a live format that you can watch anytime. Okay. But yeah, we can get introduced you to that. You know, if you go to Mike Fury, I think they're published mikeferry.com. Uh, mm -hmm. you'll see some of our, those, those live presentations have been published because we want you to see them. Right. Okay. okay good. So, you know, Mike Ferry have centered this presentation on, on really when he built it back in the seventies, this five-step process was built in the mid seventies and he built it on a platform. Okay. And the platform was this, I need a presentation that's going to cover the questions that the seller always asks. The seller always asks the same questions, right? How long is it going to take? How much am I going to get? And what are you going to do to get it sold? So I'm going to build a presentation that covers that so I don't have to answer those questions all the time, right? And then he said, they always object the same way. So I need to be able to build a presentation and understand since they always object the same way, let me build a presentation that will avoid most of that. But then if they do object, let me get the answers, right? I have a friend in the business. I can appreciate that. And almost everyone does. So let me ask you, do you absolutely have to sell this home? Or are you just looking to do your friend a favor? Obviously you had me out for a reason, right? Do you feel I can sell your home? They always respond the same way. And then he said, I need to build a presentation that allows me to be able to deliver the market stats in a way that they can understand it. So clear back in the seventies, that was Mike's forward thinking about developing a presentation. So the last point I want to give you, we have a five-step presentation. It's five steps. The steps were designed for you to win, not to cause you pain. Okay. They were designed. So you walk out with seven grand in your hand and we, they were designed because Mike said, I'm going to do what real estate agents don't. So step one, pre-qualify. Here's, here's your competition and here's you. Step one, pre-qualify 100%. Does your competition do it? No. Do mm -hmm. you? Yes. One step ahead. Okay. Mail a really nice, clean, non-ego based pre-listing package. Does your competition? No. Do you? One step ahead. Call back and confirm. Does your competition ever do that? Never. One more step ahead. Right. Show up mentally, physically, and emotionally. Most agents show up after fighting with their teenager as they drive across town. Okay, one more step ahead. Use a canned scripted presentation that is designed for the seller only. Does your competition do that? Never. You're five steps ahead. So our presentation is built for you to win one step at a time every time. Right? It's so simple. Okay. So I'm hoping that you guys have made some decisions today. I'm hoping you've decided to become world-class if I had my way. I'm hoping you decide to put the energy into becoming world-class. I hope you have decided to adopt the Mike Ferry way to do it, okay, right? It's not that complicated, right? And then I'm really hoping that you'll connect the dots between presentation and all your goals. Yeah. Let me just say, and you're amazing, Tony. Uh, well, we have a couple uh, people uh, on this webinar listening to this mm -hmm. uh, that aren't from our company, but what I think it's, so they don't understand the part about 
how important listing is if you want to be a great agent, because you can be a good agent being a buyer. And then Anthony Shop, you jump in here. You can be uh, a good agent. You can make some money just being a buyer's agent or dealing mostly with buyers. But if you ever want to get above 300,000, actually I'm being generous there, 200,000, you really have to be like a great listing agent because look at the time management. When you have, especially in this environment where there's five, you're going to be showing people around for, uh, if you're a buyer's agent, you're going to be showing people around for 15, 20 properties. You're going to probably lose a couple. You're probably going to lose a couple like deals just because everything's multiple offers now. For sure. And, and then you can't manage your time. You can't do anything because you got like a, uh, all these buyers and you can't find them homes and you haven't even start the home selling process, you know, the home buying process with them every single time. Well, if you go to a listing presentation, you spend their 30, 45 minutes, you're strong. You walk out of that and assuming you priced it right, it's like $7,000 in your hands. Yep. Think about it. I mean, the amount of work that you're going to do today compared to a buying agent, you might be literally like 10%. So, and then guess what? When you're a listing agent, what are you going to have? You're going to get calls off those uh, signs. Then you can give that to some of your buyer agents and that kind of thing. So what I'm trying to say, like there's different steps on evolving as an agent, right? Everybody starts out with a buying agent because they're like, well, this is easy money. I got the check and that kind of thing. But for yep. you to be a really big agent or, you know, make the kind of money that you really want to make, you have to make the conversion into a listing agent. And for you to make a conversion to a listing agent, the only way you're gonna do that is of an amazing presentation. Yes. Well, so many people bounce off of it, Alex. And the problem is, is that I think most people uh, can really conceptually go, that's true, Alex, I get it. I've been, I've spent the last, you know, uh, three, four, five months, nights, weekends, getting beat out and I'm, I'm tired, right? And I'm, I still haven't closed a couple of these buyers and, you know, it's getting worse. And so conceptually, everybody agrees with us. The challenge is, is that they run into the skills. There's no real skill set required. And don't, don't take it the wrong way. I understand the skills with the buyer. There's not nearly the skill set required with a buyer as there is to become a listing agent. Right. So many agents, and I've watched them, you know, they're working with some buyers. They get to that fed up point, right? I'm sick of this. This is crazy. I just had another one cancel on me, right? All the emotion and all that. And they go, that's it. I'm going to be a listing agent. And they start to go down the road of it. Well, it's uncomfortable and the skills and it's, you know, it's hard at first and it's kind of awkward and you have to prospect, right? I mean, you can't have to go find these things. You can't wait for them. And so they run into that and then they get, they get pushed back just a little bit and the natural rebound is back to the buyers. So they spend their whole career knowing that I should be a listing agent, but it's just a place to, you know, you know, like a rebound spot I had, you know, so you go back and you take another buyer on another, next thing you know, it's 20 years later never nearly the money you should have and yeah. you never quite broke through. Good. That's the challenge. Anthony Shep, you got any comments? I think no, that's, I like that. that's very I like good information. Um, and I, and I, I just uh, had a meeting with uh, one of the newer agents today and talked about how listings will save you so much time and money, but uh, you have to equate that into your confidence level, uh, your pre presentation skills as well, um, and knowing sometimes when to shut up and just be quiet. So uh, this information is really good information um, that we could cascade on to the agents because I'm sitting here like wanting to give you a round of applause, like the 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 yeah. the singer. Because hey, 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 Tony, good job, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you know, but it's it's working. I'll tell you. Um, it, there's no way around the work. You know, most of the back of a presentation is seen behind the curtains. Nobody's watching. You don't get a lot of accolades for it. Um, for me, it was one hour every morning working on my prospecting skills, right? What to say to a for sale by owner. And then one hour every afternoon working on my presentation skills. And for me, I was, I didn't have any other choice. I didn't know how to do it. I had to make a living. And, and I did accept Mike Ferry's belief that you should be a listing agent. So I would spend the, that hour and hour and I did it for two straight years. And so for two straight years, it was two hours a day. Well, most people go, God, that's a lot of time. doesn't look like it now. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to, I have a good, I have a good saying for you to like, uh, 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 I'll let you copy it. 
Tony, but it's pretty good. But do you know in the Olympics, in the 100 meter uh, sprint, do you know what the difference between the gold medalist and the fourth place person is? It's a little tiny fraction. What is it? Like nine tenths of a second. I mean, yeah, nine hundredths of a second. Nine one hundredths of a second. Scary, right? Between gold and being in fourth place. And so it's about just adding, like, making your craft better. Like, I'll give you, and I know you got to go here, Tony, but I'll give one last example. So, you know, me, Shep, and Anthony have been to, and our agents have been to a ton of these Mike Fury events. Well, mm -hmm. when you go to them, you start recognizing his jokes. But guess what? I still laugh at the jokes, even though I know the answers because the presentation <laughs> is so good. Like, yeah. He kneels. His presentation is so good. I still know the joke is coming and I still laugh at it. Well, the truth is you have to, there's one part about being a long-term listing agent you have to accept is you have to keep training yourself and reminding yourself, hey, I've done this several thousand times, but it's the first time for them. Yeah. It's the first time for this seller sitting across from me right now. So even though I've done it thousands of times, it's their first time. So I'm obligated to do my best delivery which I know Mike does. He's done tens of thousands of presentations, but he does have that approach. This is the first time for half of this audience. So I've got to give it my best because who's going who's gonna to pick it up, right? Yeah. It's that thing. I want to leave you with a couple thoughts. One is, first of all, some great news for you guys. Did you guys know that the Mike Ferry uh, um, retreat is live? Let me, you mean it's not going to be Zoom anymore? It's going to be We're live? Be live at the Superstar Retreat. Oh, July. awesome. That's good. That's exciting. Yeah. The 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th of July, we're scheduled. Uh, going to be Ooh. at the Nation. They're releasing the restrictions May 1st. Uh, we're going to go live. Okay. That's so exciting. naturally for you guys and, and hopefully some people watching, you might decide to take a little trip, come out and see Mike Ferry in a live format and see his presentation and you get it for half price. Okay. And then there's one other thing I want you to be aware of. I noticed last year in the Mike Ferry organization, we've got, you know, several thousand people that are in coaching with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in my work here, I've had a chance to see this. We all know the inventory did this. Yeah. We all know the inventory shrunk, but what most people don't know is the inventory also did this. Okay. It shrunk and it moved. And, and what I mean by moved is we had the largest percentage since we've been keeping track in Mike Ferry, the largest percentage of our coaching clients have their best income year ever in COVID. Yeah. The largest percentage of our real estate coaching clients had their best income year ever. Why? Because when the, when the inventory shrunk, our coaches kept pounding on the agent and pulling and encouraging and prodding. And I know there's COVID out there. Let's figure out how and kept prodding and pulling it. Let's get to work. I don't care if you have to double the amount of context. Let's do it. And that coaching environment for them caused them to have the most income they've ever made in their life in a year. Okay. So I'm going to be straight up honest with people watching. Okay. The real estate market has shifted a bit and it's shifting. When it shifts like this, you have to consider for yourself the fact, do you need somebody and get a professional business coach that will pull and push and encourage and prod and teach and, and train and challenge you and do all those things all year long so you can have your best income year ever? That's so true today, the way the world is working. The haves and the have nots, mm -hmm. it's widening, right? Yes, so I uh, just a little challenge. There's no sales pitch in that other than if you were ready to do that, you should do that now. Okay. That's and we actually, we subsidize our agents heavily subsidize them to go to the Mike Ferry, like July thing. So uh, don't forget about that guys. Like, uh, you know, we pay the majority of your costs to go out there. So, uh, uh, well, Anthony, I, I know you're, you were, uh, it, it's, I know it's hard getting a hold of one of the best listing agents in the world. So you got other things to do. I'm sure. Thank you guys. Well, I appreciate it. And what, and I'll come to your guys office anytime. Michael, let me, we've got these webinars. Of course, Michael do those as well. And, and, you know, we've got these webinars queued up as part of the elite program. Thank you again for being part of that. And we'll all see each other soon. All right. Thank you, sir. Have Thanks, a great day. Bye everybody.